Hello everybody and welcome to my in-depth guide for the Messiah Trophy in Outlast 2, which requires you to complete the game on insane difficulty without changing the battery. Now before we begin, it is extremely important that you make sure you have the latest version update of Outlast 2, which is patch 1.05. You could check this by pressing start over the app, going to information, and next to the version, you will find your answer. The reason for this is because in earlier versions of this game, enemies were in different locations and behaved differently during certain sections. Meaning, if you're watching an older guide for this game that was made during an older version of the patch, many of those strategies people used to use won't work anymore on the current version. So be very attentive of which version of the game you are playing on. Next. Before attempting your run, I highly advise you to play a completed playthrough of this game on Nightmare Difficulty. There is no difference between Nightmare Difficulty and Insane Difficulty, besides the fact that on Insane, if you die, you restart from the beginning. Enemy behavior is exactly the same as it is on Nightmare, despite what anyone may tell you, and I am very confident about this fact. That being said, practicing all of your strategies via Chapter Select on Nightmare can be extremely helpful, especially if you have a lot of difficulty completing any section in particular. So please feel free to make use of this, and you'll be so thankful that you did. Up next, make sure the Gamma under the Brightness setting is all the way up, so that the game is as bright as it can possibly be. During many sections of the game, you'll have to navigate in pitch black darkness and use nothing but your knowledge of the game to get through for the sake of saving the battery life of your one and only battery. So having the brightness at max can really help with this. And so here we are kicking off our insane playthrough on Outlast 2. One battery. That's very important. We don't want to use the one battery. Now, uh, fun fact about the battery, actually before I get into that, I'm gonna say, we're, I'm gonna be skipping all cutscenes for obvious reasons. They take way too fucking long, they're unskippable, they suck, so I'm gonna skip them and edit them out. I'm pretty sure nobody's gonna have a complaint about that. But anyways, uh, speaking of the battery, it's worth mentioning that, uh, there is a point in the game, uh, it's right around the time you're introduced to the enemy, the boss opponent, uh, Nick and Laird. Uh, which is the, the two goons that shoot arrows at you. Um, there's a part shortly after you meet them where you end up losing your camera. And it's worth mentioning that when that happens, no matter how much battery life you have conserved prior to that moment, no matter what, it doesn't matter how much battery life you used, d when you get your camera back, the battery will be at 75% battery life. So... Even if you conserved your battery all the way up to that point and you literally never used it or turned it on, you're still going to drop down to 75%. So basically the benefit of knowing that is that you can be not so strict with conserving your camera uh, before you get to that point. Like, feel free to use it every now and then if you really need to and it would be convenient. Obviously don't go crazy, you know, do it within reason. Uh, it is very important that you learn the vast majority of this game navigating through the pitch black darkness. As you can see me doing right now, uh, you could use the sky as a bit of a um, wayfinder to know which way you're going and if you're going the right way. However, not all parts are like that. There's a many parts in this game where it's literally just pitch black and there's no way to know unless you did the part enough times in practice that it's just muscle memory and you know where to go without actually having to see so yeah, I highly recommend practicing uh, those situations as much as possible, as well as every and all enemy encounters as well. Now, speaking of enemy encounters, we're going to be coming up to our first enemy right up around this bend, and there he is. And believe it or not, you probably wouldn't even know this, but it is very possible for you to be killed here, which is why I'm talking about it. As you can see, if you sprint fast enough around this corner, you can end up running right into him before he despawns, and he's gonna murder your ass. So try not to be too quick when sprinting down this way. Just make your way slowly through here. He'll despawn and everything will be okay. I would assume most people wouldn't even know that you could die there. But uh, hey, as I like to say, if it's possible to suck ass at a game, I will find a way. Because I'm pretty sure I'm like one of the only few people who ever died there. 
Now we're going to be continuing to make our way forward. Uh, very dark in this area coming up here. Uh, now, just a reminder, I was talking a bit about the battery earlier and how you don't have to be super so strict with it. Um, what I would suggest, though, at all times, general rule of thumb, if you're ever going to use battery life, only ever tap the light on and off. Don't ever keep it on for, like, longer than a second. Try. I know that sounds rough, but try to get good at just flicking it on and on and using the information you gained from that one snapshot uh, to figure out your surroundings and get through. That's why I said it's so important to practice these areas uh, a lot. Speaking of practice, uh, this will be our first encounter with Marta. Now, the second she spawns, you didn't actually really see it there, but uh, she did spawn. As you can see, she's coming around the bend there to chase me. Um, now, funny enough, uh, if you run right up and wa wait for her to spawn and then turn around and run backwards as fast as possible most of the time honestly she despawns it'll be weird you'll be standing there waiting uh, right where i did for her to come walking around the bend like she did and there's a lot of times where she just doesn't come because she despawns for some reason now i don't know if you hang around and wait for like an extended period of time if she'll show up again i don't know i've never stood around long enough to figure that out but I have had her despawn there many times. Not that it really matters because you're not really in any danger there. It's very easy to just juke her around the house and get to where you need to go. But yes, that can happen. I, I was surprised that it didn't happen on my actual run because, like I said, I've had it happen many times. But uh, And we're going to be coming up to uh, a much more significant uh, enemy encounter that requires a little more finesse than the one we just passed. So coming up to this window here, we're gonna jump out and we're gonna be coming up to another window just up ahead. Now, as soon as you hop through this window pane, there's gonna be a guy straight ahead of you and you're gonna see his silhouette walk past the window in front of you. However, not before you get tutorialed on the camera, which by the way, happens every single time and there's no way to stop it from happening. Unless you could turn it off in the settings. I don't know, I never tried. But anyways, you don't want to move too far up to the window too fast because he will spot you and he'll break through the window and come try to murder your ass. So you don't want to do that. But basically the strategy here is we wait long enough for him to walk past me. And what I'll do is I'll slowly walk right up to the window and I'll wait about roughly five seconds or so for him to keep walking forward, which he will do. Now, what I'd like to do after that is to start sprinting forward, and we're going to see a guy straight up ahead of us, and we're going to circle around the bend that we just passed. The enemy that just spotted us will follow you, and in turn, the way forward will be cleared. And once you see the bright light engulf the screen, then that lets you know that the enemy chase is over, and even though there are dudes right in front of you and all around you, uh, they're not actually going to attack you. They are non-hostile at this point so don't worry about them and continue to make your way forward however one last thing regarding that interaction it is possible that when you're running around in the dark areas it is very easy to get stuck on something in this spot particularly when you're making your loop around and losing momentum here or getting stuck on something could very easily lead to one of the enemies catching you and maybe even killing you so it is worth it to take some time to practice this routing until you got it down pat and honestly that part's not too difficult at all it's just a little specific in how it needs to be done but that is that moving on now with that being said i'd like to point out you may have watched someone else's video or guide and saw them do uh, some of these parts that you're going to see me do noticeably differently, and maybe their strategies might be more optimal than mine. I don't know, because guess what? I didn't follow a guide when I did my playthrough. I playtested and practiced every single enemy encounter and section in this game thoroughly myself. I took the time and made the effort to route these specific strategies on my own and succeed at using them enough times consistently that I felt comfortable enough to share these strategies with you in hopes that they will help you become successful at them as well. Are my strategies the best on YouTube? Certainly not. I'm sure there are many people who have figured out smarter and better ways to do some of these sections. But guess what? This is my guide. 
So, uh, this was what worked for me. And if you don't like it, there's the door! Too bad! But hopefully you can appreciate that I put in my own time and effort into figuring this stuff out. And hopefully you can appreciate that level of dedication. Because I didn't want someone else holding my hand. I wanted to be the guy that you all look to for advice. And hopefully I can accomplish that within this video. So next up, we're going to slide down this hill, talk to Lynn. And uh, we're going to get a pretty lengthy cutscene coming up. But before that, there's going to be this moment where Blake raises his camera. And the battery life is going to be on automatically. So just remember to turn it off. Uh, you know, just so that we don't waste battery life unnecessarily. But yes, the... Uh, after the very long cutscene, uh, you'll be wobbly woozy, your vision will be all blurred. But if you just make your way forward, we're going to come up to some water up here. And there is another enemy encounter just up ahead. Um, this one has a surefire strategy that if you just do it this way every time, it'll work every time. I've literally never died here before. So you can be sure that this strategy is fail proof. So, as soon as you see the flashlight up ahead, it means uh, the enemy is approaching, and he's going to walk across the bridge uh, in the direction to your left. Uh, and he will spot you if you don't submerge yourself, but just make sure that you're under the water as he walks by. Very easy peasy. But yeah, as soon as you get to the bridge, uh, just climb up over it, and then just gun it, haul ass till you get to the door, and then you'll get this scripted event where you are transported to the school. There's going to be a door right up ahead of you, and if you are fast enough, you can very easily see where the door is before the room goes pitch black. Uh, otherwise, if you just stand there, the room will go pitch black, and you'll have to navigate the darkness. And there's uh, a lot of school desks in that room, so it's easy to get stuck on stuff. But like I said, if you're fast enough to the door, it shouldn't be a problem. And then we're just going to make our way this way. Um, but yeah, as I was trying to say, we actually got a very long cutscene coming up, uh, so I'm gonna be skipping that. But what I wanted to say was, it's extremely difficult to drown yourself in this game, so don't ever really worry about being underwater for lengthy periods of time, because the game notifies you quite visually and audibly when you're about to drown. You'll see a ton of bubbles in the middle of your screen, uh, as if you're about to die. And Blake will start losing his goddamn mind, uh, wondering what kind of ape monkey is in control of him. Yeah, the game gives you a lot of warning if you're about to drown, so, like, don't worry about staying underwater for long periods. Better safe than sorry, and feel free to play it patient if you need to. But yes, we're gonna be making our way this way, and, uh, we're gonna be walking for a little bit. Now, a uh, fun fact that not everyone might be aware of, but... Actually, uh, whenever you are in some kind of action where your movement speed is altered, for example, we're swimming right now, so you're actually a lot slower than you would be if you were walking. Same with when you're crossing a uh, cornfield and wading through the corn, or if you're walking across a narrow ledge that's very thin, like a, like a plank or a tree. Uh, all these things, when you're doing them, slow you down. However, it's worth mentioning that if you're holding sprint, even during these uh, periods where that's happening, you can still move faster by holding sprint. It won't be as fast as you see now with like a regular sprint, but you'll still be moving faster and it'll still eat up stamina. Why is this important? Because there are actually several moments throughout the game where sprinting through these decreased movement speed areas is beneficial so it's important to know that you can do it i myself died many times at a particular part simply because i wasn't sprinting and i didn't know that you could and i lost a lot of runs and wasted a lot of time because i didn't know that simple fact so hopefully we could save you guys some time as well but as you can see as soon as we started this section we just uh start moving away from the guy who appears in front of you in the in the cornfield we may, we just hang left side, be as far away from these guys as you can. Um, they do have a tendency to be programmed to just walk straight towards you. Even though they don't know you're there, they'll still uh, hover around the area you are currently located in. It's it, That's just the way their AI is designed, but try not to let it spook you. It's very easy to navigate around them through the corn, make your way over, and jump across. 
Once again, I've literally never died there, so it's very easy to do what I just did. Copy it, replicate it, and it works consistently, I can assure you. I've never died there. So, and if someone ever does spot you in, the, in that area, again, it's as easy as just running to where you need to go. Like, it's very hard to get uh, cock-blocked there. But yes, after we open this barn door and make our way inside, as soon as you open the barn door, there's going to be two NPCs that start roaming the area. So you want to be a little bit quick. You don't want to do a full-blown sprint to the truck that I'm currently hiding under, but just, uh, you know, try not to linger or waste time and have one of these guys spot you before you finish crawling under it. And once you are under the truck, you are completely and 100% safe. This strategy works consistently 100% of the time. Um, so this guy always circles around the back of the truck like you see, and then... He has two things he can do here. For me, he made his way out of the barn, but he can actually start walking back the way he came. But still, if you just remain under the truck, he will eventually make his way to the other side of the room, and you can still crawl out and do what you see me doing here. As soon as they have their backs facing you and you're out of sight, it's as easy as just crawling out from under the truck, making your way over to the cart. Again, I wouldn't recommend sprinting because that might alert the enemies. So just, you know, be fast, but walk. And you are able to do that very consistently. But, uh, you know, speaking of which, I did mention that that initial enemy had two possibilities of two things he could do. He could either walk right out of the barn or uh, turn around and go back the way he came. Uh, yeah, so the way enemy behavior works in this game is enemies are set to randomly path in different directions and they can just change the way they decide to go at the drop of a dime which means enemy pathing is random so if you practice a section enough times and you start growing accustomed to a particular strategy if that strategy relies on an enemy going a set path every time it is, by definition, an inconsistent strategy, and you probably shouldn't use it. Because enemies, you cannot rely on them to always path the same way all the time. That shit can get you killed. I know I have died many times on insane attempts, because I thought an enemy would always travel the same way, and then sure enough found out the hard way that he can just decide not to. Uh, this is another perfect example that I'm talking about navigating the dark. So you walk up here, you slide down the hill, and you're not going to see me use my camera here because I'm saving battery, but this part is as simple as just walking forward. Once you see the little dust particles there, it's kind of hard to see, but once you do, uh, that's when you hit the wall. So then you have to crouch and then just continue to hold forward. You'll get another sliding animation shortly after that uh, to let you know that you did it right. And then you'll come into this room. So, like I said, that part, I've done it enough times to know exactly how to path there. Uh, and it's just muscle memory. I don't need to use my battery life or turn on the camera. And that's something that you guys want to get good at too. Because you don't want to use the camera unnecessarily if you don't have to. And those are areas like that are extremely easy to navigate. This next part, however, it's going to be pure darkness. I like to use my battery here because I very often get stuck in that corridor. There was a... If you notice, there was a branch on the ground to the left. I get stuck on that branch very often. Um, so, as but as you can see, I just flicked my camera on uh, just for a second to get my bearings and see where I needed to go to avoid that particular branch, uh, which was basically just hang, hang towards the right. Um, and yeah, I, I have gotten stuck in that cave so many times, which is why I used my battery there, because... It's really annoying, and I like to just avoid that possibility. Uh, but once you reach the other side of the cave, you want to kind of look up, and you'll be able to see the sky, and then that is always a good indicator of knowing where you should go next. I've never actually tried crawling as fast as possible out of here. I don't think it's possible for that guy to spot you, but I don't know. Uh, either way, I just wait till his flashlight uh, goes away before I crawl under the stairs. Once we open this door, what I like to do here in another pitch black area, turn my back towards the stairs as I go up, wait until I come to a complete stop, that means I hit the wall, then I just shimmy to the left a little bit, make my way over, do the same thing, and as long as you have your back turned towards the light source, 
you're able to, like, know where you are in relation to the room. Uh, instead of just being completely lost, fumbling around in the dark. So that's what I like to do to navigate that room. Uh, once again, that is another part where you absolutely do not need to use your battery. So, uh, you probably shouldn't. But here we go. We're at this part now. Now this part also, I find, has a very consistent strategy. And I find every time I do it correctly, uh, the key word there being correctly... It is easy to fuck this part up, but it's a very simple strategy that I find is very consistent. So once you get to around here, you want to start sprinting because a guy's going to come out of that house right in front of you. And if you're too slow, he'll see you. And then there's another guy who's going to come out on the left side there. But once you get to this pitchfork here and you crouch down, you want to crouch up ahead to this wagon in front of you and just sit right here exactly where you see me chilling. This guy will always path this way. I have never seen him go left around the wagon unless he spotted you. I find he only goes left side of the wagon if you are compromised and if he saw you uh, before you crouch down. It's the, the whole key purpose there is just to be quick. Now, if by off chance you do get spotted, there is this barrel at the top of the stairs right here. And if you are capable of navigating around the enemies and getting up the stairs before them, I find they're often very slow and you are able to get into this barrel and hide before they breach the top of the stairs. And if you do that, you will de-aggro them. I find every time I've ever gotten caught there, I was able to hide in that barrel and eventually lose them if I waited it out. It's not the end of the world if you take damage and get hit. There are plenty of bandages in the beginning of the game. It's also worth noting that hiding under the wagon is very inconsistent and you will very often get spotted if you choose to do that. So I highly recommend that you do not do that. But like I said, as long as you make it here very quickly before the guy coming down the stairs ahead of you can spot you, as long as you just chill here, he will always walk right on past. I have play tested this part many, many times and I have been able to use this exact strategy 10 times in a row, maybe more, and he always does the same thing. Again, unless you fuck it up, and if you screw up the timing or accidentally get spotted or something like that, that is the only way this strategy can fail. So, I can assure you, have full confidence in it, and you'll be fine. Once you make it to the top of the stairs, you're going to be coming into this room here, and you will have to jumpstart the generator in order to power the elevator that is outside. So once you do that, you're going to turn, and wham, bam, oh my god, a jump scare. Uh, now, as long as you don't get too close to this chick, she's going to leave you completely alone, and you have nothing to fear. However, she will attack you if you get too close to her, so make sure you give her a wide berth. Stay the fuck away from her until she reaches her destination. She's going to walk slowly over to the banister here, uh, overlooking the wagon, and she will eventually start going on about her religious nonsense. And uh, we're just going to slink right on past her very carefully. And once you do that, you're in the clear. Uh, try to be slow here because there is a guy running up ahead. Don't let him spot you by moving uh, too fast forward. I don't even know if that's possible, but uh, better safe than sorry. Anyways, I just take my time there to make sure he doesn't spot me. And once you move up far enough, eventually you will see Marta come out from the corridor up ahead. So once Marta shows up, uh, you want to turn around and haul ass back to the wagon. And I find this is a perfect place to uh, circle jerk around her. It's very convenient. Sometimes Marta can take a little bit to make her way over here. But I find most of the time she usually gets here rather quickly. And once she does, uh, it's as simple as, you know playing the uh, work around here. We're going to give her the slip. Whichever side of the wagon she chooses to path around, you go the opposite way. I've never actually had her choose to walk to the left side of the wagon, but, uh, you know, who knows? Things can happen. The enemies are very random in this game, so I wouldn't rule it out. But yeah, whichever side she decides to go on, as soon as she aggros to you uh, and becomes aware of your presence, it's as easy as just uh, circling around the wagon Sprinting all the way to the elevator. That part's very simple. I have never died there. So that is a very consistent and easy strategy for how to get around that part. Uh, once we're in the elevator, we're just going to be waiting. And we have another school section coming up very shortly as soon as we approach the well. Just up ahead here. Now, 
with the what's nice about the first few school sections is that you are completely safe and cannot be killed for I want to say the first five or six school sections uh, you are in no danger thankfully because I personally can't stand the school sections so as soon as you're in the vent you're gonna just walk up or crawl up rather and then you hang a right now you just hold forward until Blake comes to a complete stop once he does you hold left and then you keep moving it's another straight shot. You'll, you'll know you're going straight when you see Blake's arms here. Eventually, you will come to another stop. And then you want to make another left. You will see a light at the end of the tunnel if you did this correctly. Once again, you do not need to use battery life here. It is very easy to navigate. And you are in no danger. So, once we crash out of the vent, you open this door. And there's going to be a long hallway here. You want to sprint not fully to the end, but eventually you will see not the first door, but the second door, uh, which is right in front of me. You will see one of these lockers on the to the right of it open up, and it's going to have a uh, music box inside of it. And as you can see, so uh, the music box is very noticeable because it glows and flashes, so just kind of poke around in the dark until you see it. Uh, once you interact with that, that will allow us to progress. Um, I think when Blake raises the camera there, he turns on the battery automatically. I don't think that was me who did it, but just be ready for that to turn it off and on. You run to the end of the hall that you came from and then run back to the door and the door will be opened. Uh, and now we're just, uh, gonna make our way down this next hallway, open the door here. And oh my god, we're in the next enemy encounter, so things are gonna happen pretty fast here. This asshole's gonna throw us down the stairs and, uh, threaten to... Uh, do terrible, nasty things to us. But we're just gonna haul ass and say no. Because we don't want that. So as soon as you start, don't run into that guy on the left. Take the door just to the right of him. Keep making your way. Keep sprinting. Hop over the first, uh, whatever that was there. Wham! Right through the door. Around the table on the left side. And then over to the hole here. Crouch. And then this part... It's pretty dark in here, but I can tell you confidently that this part is uh, as easy as just holding forward. Um, you're going to have to make a right turn here, but um, I've playtested this many times. And again, if you're just holding forward, Blake will make that right turn, even if you're holding forward. So you just keep holding forward. It's as simple as that. And then this guy's going to shine his flashlight down, the guy behind you, which will be nice because you'll be able to see... Uh, crawl out to the left side here as fast as you can. Now, as soon as you crawl out from under the house, Blake will stand up all automatically. You don't have to. So as long as you're holding forward, Blake will do the job for you. Uh, and then you just make your way into the house across the path. That guy's going to be really upset about what you just did to him. And then once you make your way over here, when you get close to that door, uh, a guy's going to pop out of it. But it's as easy as crawling under the bed just over here. And he will walk right on by. So we're going to wait for him to path around the bed. He's going to make his way to where you just came from. And as soon as he passes the corner and he's out of sight, that is when I'm going to crawl out from under the bed. We're going to stand up. And I'm not going to sprint because I don't know if that guy will hear me. So I'm just going to walk over to the staircase here. Don't worry about that guy behind you at this point. Uh, he's just a formality. And then we make our way down here. There's going to be a bed just across from that doorway we're looking at and we are going to crawl underneath it a dude is going to come out of that door uh he does this very consistently and uh he will walk over to the staircase we just made our way down he's going to make his way up and as soon as he starts going up the stairs we can crawl out safely stand up open the door close the door and lock it now as soon as you move away from this door those guys are going to rush back downstairs and start breaking it open you want to be fast here if you delay even by a second you can die you need to be extremely fast the second you finish lo unlocking or sorry locking that door you turn around and haul ass to the bookcase. Try not to get stuck on anything because, like I said, they are right behind you and they break through that door extremely quickly. Delaying there even by a second can mean your death, so it's very spooky. But um, you don't need battery life to navigate these hallways here. Uh, they are very short hallways and it's easy to spot the light just if you fumble around. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that once you run down here, those guys don't follow you anymore. You're not being chased. 
Once you finish pushing the bookcase out from uh, in your way, and then you make your way down into that mineshaft looking uh, hallway, they can't follow you. So just don't be scared. Um, you're not on a timer here. But yeah, as you can see, like I just navigate in the dark until I see the light. Um, you do have to turn to see the light, but yeah, it's, you don't need battery life. So I like to make my way to the other side of the room here, and then I turn around and look at the windows because they are a light source. So I can tell where I am in the room, right there. And there is a door directly across from those windows, as you can see. Eventually, if you navigate, it will ask you to open the door. Uh, once you open that door, uh, they're going to aggro to you again. You don't want to delay there. It is They will catch up to you if you wait there too long. So, just make your way upstairs, slide under the wood, uh, hop over the porch or the balcony. And then make your way over here, hop over the fence, keep sprinting. You are being chased right now, so try not to delay. And then crawl under here. Once again, you do not need your battery life here. This part is as simple as holding forward. Even though Blake turns left here and then he turns right, I'm telling you, this part is as easy as holding forward. So as long as you're holding forward, you're good. And uh, eventually, you will make your way. Once again, when you reach the end of this crawl space, Blake is going to stand up automatically. You don't have to uncrouch, so don't worry about it. He will stand up on his own. The second he does, that's how you know you can start sprinting. Run up to the shack, jump through the window. Now we're going to have to bust the floor, so just look down at the floor and the game will give you the prompt to hit square. Uh, once you kick it three times, you can crouch, and then once again, you're in another crawl space. Once again, Blake, when he gets to the end of the crawl space, he will stand up on his own. You do not need to uncrouch. So, as soon as he stands up, make your way over here. Bam, you're officially not being followed anymore. The enemy chase has concluded, and you are safe. However, not for long. We have one of the harder sections coming up. You do not need battery life here. Just navigate the dark until you see the light. There's a door just past that window. Bam. Um, but yeah, one of the harder uh, sections of the game is coming up. So we're going to have our first really big, difficult uh, inter enemy encounter with Marta. And this part can go really wrong. I find every time I jump off that roof there, uh, sometimes I'll get injured and have to heal. Sometimes I won't. It's really finicky. I don't know why you can make the same drop over and over and sometimes you get hurt, sometimes you don't. I don't get it. It's weird. But anyways, you have to uh, push this wagon over to the door so that you can hop over. There's Marta intimidating us as she does. And before I hop over the fence, I like to wait until she makes her way all the way to the end. And you will literally see her despawn if you do this. So just wait till she does. I would assume if you hop that fence too quickly, she could turn around and face fuck you for it. So I really wouldn't recommend doing that. But once she despawns, you're good. As soon as you run over here. Now this is the part I want to talk about because the chase is about to begin. Right in front of us on the right here. Just to the right of the wagon. You see that hole in the fence? That hole is your fucking savior. Let me tell you right now that if you ever get spotted by Marta and she aggros, and let's say you're low on stamina and you know she's going to catch you, like you won't have enough stamina to get away, no matter where you are in this village area, make your way to this hole. It will save you. You sprint to it, slide under it, and just wait on the other side she won't go through the hole. She will suddenly have to navigate around and repath to get to where you are. And this takes Marta quite a while to do this. And in that time, you could literally just chill on the other side of the hole and build your stamina. If you see her getting close to you when you're on the other side of the hole, then it's as easy as crawling back through the hole. And once again, now Marta has to navigate all the way around to get back to where you are. This hole is your saving grace. Like I said, if you are ever in trouble and you need to regain stamina, you run back to this hole ASAP and make use of it. So just remember it's there because it's very important and it's what makes this chase a hell of a lot easier. Now, as soon as you begin to approach the wagon that you need to push, you want to start pushing it immediately. Do not waste time here. The reason for this is because once you move up far enough, this will trigger Marta to spawn. As you can see, she did. 
and we got off the wagon promptly because as you may not know, Marta is a boss character and she will one-shot your ass if she catches you, no matter what. There is no surviving an attack from her. So, uh, what I like to do is I always like to run to the very end of the road until Marta aggros once again. And then I like to loop around this house and around this next house and then through this alley. By this point, more often than not, Marta will de-aggro. Uh, but if she doesn't, then you would want to just run into the hole. As you can see, she broke the fence on the right. Um, and the way Marta works in this area is that she can literally just despawn and respawn whenever it's convenient for her. So don't ever think that uh, she's always going to be in a set location that makes sense. Because trust me, it never does. And she can pop up wherever is most convenient for her. But as you can see, uh, I always run that same loop that I did at first whenever she aggros to me over at the wagon. So I just heard her aggro again, but since she broke the fence, I decided to run to the other side of it and go ahead and wait at this hole while we recover some stamina because I have been running quite a lot and it would be near a death sentence if you were to let yourself run out of stamina during this section. I highly don't recommend it. Always prioritize regaining your stamina, especially if you've been running around for a long time. So Marta seems to have fucked off, so I'm slowly uh, going to inch the wagon uh, ever so much further to where it needs to be. And once you push it far enough, she's right next to me here. Um, and what's really surprising is I run back to go do my same loop that I always do at the very end of this road, and she's not right up my ass, because by, by the time I finish this loop, she de again. And it's like, she was so close to me. I'm actually so shocked that she wasn't right up my ass right now. Because I find the closer she is to you, the harder it is to escape her, um, like, to have her de-aggro. So, uh, I hear her aggro again, and she's on the other side of the fence. So, I go ahead and slide under the hole. Once again, uh, I, I feel like that is the safer approach rather than, uh running all the way to the end to do the loop again because I don't know how often she's going to chase me or for how long but as you can see we're just playing the hole here and it's a huge exploit every time you're depending on which side of the hole you're on uh, she has to run all the way back around the fence and if you just keep going through the hole over and over uh, she will keep getting messed up like that in her pathing so now she's broken the second fence which is uh, right in front of me on the screen there you're going to see Marta walk out there she is um and she's going to walk down the path. When she comes back, we're just standing here waiting to regain my stamina. And, uh, you know, this part, as nerve-wracking as it is, and as high pressure and very tense and fast-paced as this part can be, it's important to play it patient and know when you can play it patient. And that hole in the fence really helps with that. But I also love this loop uh, around these two houses on the left of me here. I love playing this loop because more often than not, uh, she de when you give her the runaround. Um, and it's an easy, fast pathway back to the wagon. But yeah, we're, we're just waiting. We have all the time in the world here. Eventually, Marta will spot me. Um, and here she comes. There we go. So now she's aggroed once again. Uh, by the way, with Marta, she always gives you a nice little audio cue every time she aggroes. She'll always go... Doesn't sound quite like that, but she will always do that whenever she has aggroed to you. And now this is going to be the final stretch. Uh, you will hear her aggro here, but I do know the proximity of the wagon, and I know that it's close enough to the gate that I will be able to push it the full way. And you get this little animation where she starts grabbing you, and you're probably shitting yourself at that point thinking she's going to murder you. But... E fret not, even if you get that animation, uh, it means nothing, it's just a scare tactic, and she won't actually kill you there. But yeah, that's it, that's that part in a nutshell. Um, that part may take a little bit of training and practice to run the routes, get a feel for how Marta works as an AI, uh, because like I said, she's tricky. Um, it, she's very predictable, but also tricky at times, because I find there's a lot of times where she chases you for insane amounts of time, like for some reason her aggro is very high pressure sometimes. And then there's also the fact that if she is ever in an inconvenient location, she could just despawn and reappear wherever she wants, making that very tricky. Now for this part, I skipped the cutscene. You're supposed to just hide in that uh, 
little confession booth there until uh, everyone pisses off. And that last part is important. You do not want to leave the confession booth too early while all the enemies are still in the room. Because they will chase you and try to kill you if you leave too early. So, uh, yeah, make sure everyone's gone. And you will hear Blake say, The mines! Where are the mines? And once he says that, that's your audio cue to let you know it's safe to leave. But anyways, we're gonna just run to the very opposite end of where we just were in the church. Uh, open up that door, make our way around these, uh, shelvings here. And then all the way up these stairs. And we're coming up to a part that... I have failed and had runs die on many times, so uh, I'm going to try and explain it thoroughly and as the best I can. Go ahead and jump that gap there. Whenever I'm jumping gaps in this game like that, I'm always scared shitless that I'm going to fuck up the jump because I'm pretty sure you would die from the fall damage there if you did, for whatever reason, mess up the jump, even though it's a very easy jump. Uh, I haven't been pointing out bandage locations too often, but that sink on the right there... Uh, just next to the door, right to the right. I just walked past it. Um, a bandage can spawn there if... The, the reason where there was no bandage there for me is because my bandages are already full, I'm pretty sure. But there can be a bandage there that spawns if you need one. So now we're waiting through the corn, and there are uh, two enemies that are going to be uh, routing this location and pathing around here looking for you. Now, what I always do is I always hug the very left of the cornfield all the way along the fence and work my way up. Now, two things can happen here. Either there will be no one in your path and you'll get all the way to the end for free, or one of these guys is going to walk right in front of you. And as you can see, that is what happened to me. You can see the flashlight just uh, ahead of me. So what I do is I just move slightly to the right of him and just circle around him and keep continuing that momentum and I sprint down to the cornfield and get to the house as quick as possible. Now, on the off chance one of those guys does spot you, you want to close this door behind you, lock it, and we're going to run over to the room that has the crank, and in this room, it's actually going to be really hard to see it in the footage here, but there is a barrel in the darkness right to the left of the crank, and if you successfully locked that door behind you, there's no way that the enemies are going to be fast enough to see you enter this barrel. And then it's as simple as you just wait it out in the barrel until they fuck off. And then once it's safe, you climb out, grab the crank, and then you proceed as normal. So, we're going to make our way over to this door here. Open it up, head outside. There's going to be a staircase on the left here. And we're going to pop the crank in as fast and and mash it as fast as possible this part is all about speed if you if you're doing this part very fast you won't even really need to worry about the enemies being in your way also another fun fact a bandage can spawn in the same room as the crank it was really hard to see uh and once you finish the crank you make your way down the stairs and i'm just sprinting right to where i need to go so right now those guys are banging at the door because they didn't actually aggro to me originally but even if those guys are in the room it's scary as shit, but I promise you, even if they're in the room and they see you, you can still have enough time to slide and crawl under uh, the hole where you need to go, and they won't catch you if timed correctly. I have playtested it consistently, and if you're fast enough, it is a fairly consistent strat uh, to get through there. I find, because if you wait at all at that part... It makes things finicky, and, and once the guys are pathing around, it's a lot scarier to navigate around them. So that's why I find being as fast as fuck there is what's best. So now Marta's going to show up uh, just ahead of us, and I like to just wait around for a second until we get the audio. Or actually, I don't think she does that here. I think you just hear the music. I'm pretty sure she's dead silent. But you will hear the music when she aggros. Like, the chase music will begin. So the second I heard that, I just... Uh, ran through that path on the left there that loops around back to where she is. We run back there, but since she's behind us, uh, she's not in front of us anymore. That's kind of how that works. And uh, once you squeeze through that gap in the fence there, you no longer have to worry about Marta, at least for the time being. She cannot chase you or end up in this location here, so you're completely safe once you squeeze through that gap. And then we're going to make our way through here, through this uh, disgusting slaughterhouse filled with blood and then we're gonna pull the chain here to grab our uh, key item that we need to progress it's gonna be a meat hook so go ahead and grab that and don't forget now as soon as you grab that we're gonna hear Marta uh, slam the door that we came through 
uh, as another scare tactic, but once again, you are in no danger here, so don't be fooled. We see through your lies and deception, Marta. You little bitch. But yeah, as, as soon as you squeeze through that gap, she's magically gone. She despawns. You can hear her on the other side of the fence, but don't worry. Once again, just a scare tactic. So, now once we squeeze back through this gap in the fence, back to the area we just came from. Once you're back in the area that you ran from her before, this is a spot where you do not want to linger. So I'm sprinting all the way across to where we need to go. She's going to start bashing down that door on the left, but if you're sprinting that whole way... There's no way she'll bust through that door before you run right past it. Uh, thus avoiding the confrontation altogether. And then you want to put the meat hook there where it needs to be. And be very quick about pulling this chain and, and uh, sliding through the new gap. Because she's going to get in that room really quick. And you do not want to dick around in there. Don't worry about this animation. It's scripted. Uh, that doesn't mean you're dead. Uh, once you, once you uh, slide through the hole, you are safe and you're good to go. But yeah, it, it's so important to sprint that whole distance after you grab the meat hook and squeeze through the gap in the fence. Because the second she starts busting down that door, I ran into a cactus there, those are always fun. Um, the second she starts busting down that door, if you delay and she successfully busts the door down before you run past it, now you gotta like lead Marta away and it's a lot scarier and uh, you need to manage your stamina and it's spooky. But anyways, uh, this is another school section where you're completely safe. We're going to make our way into the dark hallway until we reach the nearby classroom on the left. And we're going to go ahead and grab this um, projector screen sheet. And then once you have that, we're going to make our way back out, run back down the hallway, back the way we came. We're going to open the other opposite door into the next hallway. And there's going to be a classroom with a light beaming out of the door, uh, very visible. And we're going to make our way into that classroom. Once again, you do not need any battery life here. It's completely unnecessary. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put the projector screen sheet on the projector. And uh, now we want to move the projector into the proper location. So you want to bring it to not the very last aisle, but the second last aisle. That's going to line it up with the, class, or, uh, the chalkboard on the wall over there. And then once you do that and you get the dialogue from Blake, you are free to leave. So run outside the classroom, back all the way down the hallway to where we started the section. Now there's going to be a magical door here. Now, this hallway is very spooky, but again, you cannot die here. So, we're going to run all the way to the end of the hall. And this is going to trigger some spooky shit to start happening. You're going to hear some, like, very scary audio. Um, there's even a jump scare here, but I believe the jump scare can only trigger if you're using your camera. If you don't use your camera, uh, Father Louder Mitch Milch, sorry, is not going to spook you, so don't worry about it. But yeah, so I just ran to the end of the hall where the exit sign is. You can see it on the screen there. Um, and then I ran all the way back to the other end of the hall where we started. And now I just sit here, and now we're waiting for the classroom door to open. And it will eventually. But this whole part is scripted, and it's meant to be very spooky and to scare the player. I know I'm literally just standing here, but like you could see the screens vibrating right now, and that's all part of the spook factor. So we're just trying to wait this shit out. It, it does end eventually. It takes a little while, but yeah, the spookiness will fade. Don't worry. Eventually, Father Loudermilch will give up on trying to scare you because he knows that you're way smarter than him, and we're not going to let the game spook us. Because fuck that. I don't want to be spooked. So yeah, uh, we're just waiting. So I'm literally standing next to the classroom. The door will open. You'll see the light. There it is. So right off to the right there, the door opens. I know I knew exactly where it was, but just keep an eye out for that door. And as soon as you get in here, you grab this cart, move it over next to the uh, cabinet, climb on top, go through the vent. I believe your camera's going to turn on automatically here. Uh, no, not yet. Okay, so you just crawl, keep going straight. Eventually, your camera will turn on. Um, because it's going to be a jump scare. But you could just turn the battery off as soon as it happens. There you go. So turn it right off. As you can see, we still have a shit ton of battery life. But we're almost at the part where we lose our camera and it's going to drop to 75%. So, like, as you could see, all that battery life I saved, like, it, it, it almost looks like I haven't used any at all. I mean, I actually, I think I only turned it on that one time, right? When I was in the cave back in Chapter 1. But anyways, um... Yeah, so we're going to be walking for a bit. There, there's no danger for a while. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show you, like, 
I saved all that battery, like, pretty much for no reason. Because we're going to be losing it very soon. And, like I said, it drops to 75%. No matter what. So, all that battery life I could have been using. But, what can I say? I didn't need it. Now, this is the what I was talking about. You see these linear beams that I'm uh, slowly making my way across? Yeah, you could sprint across these. I didn't even know that for a long time. And uh, there's, a, there's a section coming up that you guys are going to see where I died so many times unnecessarily because I didn't know you could sprint across these. And it sucked, and I felt really stupid after I found out. But, yeah, so these locusts here is a scripted event. They're going to knock Blake on his ass. And you're gonna fall screaming into the pit. Whoa! Uh, yeah, and then uh, we're gonna get our first introduction to Nick and Laird, which are the goons that shoot arrows at you that I mentioned earlier in the video, you may recall. And uh, we haven't lost our camera yet. I know it's just on the ground right in front of us there, but uh, this isn't the part I was talking about. But don't worry, it's coming. All right, so we're just going to hang out a little bit here until uh, they walk by. This is a bit of a uh, scripted scene, so we're just going to wait this one out. You could argue that I could have edited this out, but I, I kind of want to leave in as much in-game content as I can because I don't want you guys to be uh, suddenly confused as to where we are and at what point in the game. For the most part, I want you guys to be able to follow along and see exactly where we are. I'm only skipping, like, the really long cutscenes. But, like, stuff like this, I'll leave in just so that we know and have a good sense of, like, exactly what part of the game we're at. But, uh, yes. Eventually, it'll ask you to drop down. And once we are able to, we are gonna go ahead and drop down. And, uh, this part is pretty easy you can die but this part's pretty easy um well not this part specifically we're uh we're gonna be walking for a little bit before we reach the first uh hostile enemies also by the way when blake picks up his camera there he turns on the the camera battery automatically that wasn't me um but yeah so first we'll have this tree to crawl under i don't know why i said uh i don't i didn't mean to scare you guys about being able to die right now because you absolutely can't so we're just running up uh, through the path here. Eventually, you'll get to this log that we can uh, balance beam our way across. Uh, there are enemies coming up, but they're just not yet. I, I'm sorry to have spooked you. Anyways, once you drop down in the darkness, you want to stay around left side. Eventually, you'll be able to see better lighting the further you go up the path. Crawl under here. You will see that enemy there. It's scripted, but he can't actually hurt you. Uh, and then we're going to have to crawl again under this next log. And the enemies aren't yet, but they will be soon. Uh, I One thing, I don't know, like, there's still tips I could offer. Like, for example, uh, hiding. If you hide in one spot for too long, enemies will just magically divine your location through the fucking stars and astrology. It, it, it's a thing. A random tidbit. I know it's, uh, I probably should have said that earlier in the video, but I've been talking non-stop about relevant shit, but yeah, just never hide in a barrel or cabinet for too long when enemies are around. But yes, here we go. So now we can officially be killed. Uh, these are all enemies around here, and if you get too close to any of them, they will attack you. But we're gonna just walk on past those first few. You'll get this scripted event where you get puked on. Really gross, but, uh, he will fuck off eventually. Blake's gonna be horrified. And then we're going to walk over to this campfire nearby. Now, as soon as you approach here, there's going to be a guy right in front of you. He's going to come barreling down those steps. And you want to kind of walk backwards from him as you approach and over to the right. Now, there are enemies in the tents just nearby that campfire. And it is easy to get grabbed. So that is something you definitely want to practice. Not just because of the guys in the tents, but also the guy who runs down the stairs so quickly very easy for him to hit you if you don't time backing up properly and yeah when you do back up obviously you have your back face to the guys in the tent so practice i would highly recommend practicing that it is extremely easy once you get it down and once you understand like the proper spacing needed but i wouldn't recommend like first trying that on a on a whim i wouldn't leave that to fate or chance because yeah i feel like that part could very easily go wrong so just make sure you practice that part before your actual attempt um but yeah once we slide down the hill here again there's a bunch of guys in these tents 
Uh, and they can all hurt you if you get too close. So the second you see the light up there, Nick and Laird are going to show up. They'll take a shot at you there, but I always like to turn around immediately and run behind this tree. And I've, I've never been shot before I got to the tree. I've never had it happen. General rule of thumb... Well, actually, I'll wait till we finish this part. But yeah, so Nick's gonna come walking right up to this tree. As long as you're perfectly behind it, he can't hit you. See, he just tried to take a shot at me, but the tree acts as cover. And then once he gets close enough to the point where he would have line of sight of you, uh, just book it. I ran around that tent. You could argue it was unnecessary. But general rule of thumb when you're running from Nick and Laird, try not to ever run in a straight line. Especially if you're in his line of sight. I like to move around and kind of do like a serpentine maneuver to make it as hard as possible for him to hit you. But then again, Nick and Laird are fucking Hawkeye godshots and they will aimbot you half the time anyway. Their aim is insanely good. It's crazy. It is ridiculous. Um, so this is officially the last school section that you cannot be killed in. At, once you finish this school section, every other school section after you can be killed. So, enjoy this school section while it lasts, uh, because you won't have any more like this. But yeah, as I was saying earlier, Nick and Laird are incredibly dangerous. They're probably the scariest boss character out of all of them in the game, simply because they have a bow and arrow, and if they shoot you with it, it's a one-shot every time. Uh, minus very few exceptions. There are some really weird random interactions with his arrows, where they won't kill you for some reason. But those those are so few and far between and so rare. I didn't play test to see exactly which arrows you could take a hit from and which ones you can't. So just always assume he's going to kill you. That's the safer way to play it. Um, and this is a, after you get crucified. We skipped that very long cutscene because fuck that cutscene. So once you pull yourself off the cross, Blake's hands are going to be totally ruined. And uh, now you're going to be in this hazy state where the screen's all blurry. Just wait it out. The, the screen will fade back to normal. And try not to be too quick moving up through here. Because as you approach that campfire, there's going to be a guy who walks by. And if you walk too close, there's the guy. If you're too close to that guy when he walks by, he notices you. And then as soon as you aggro him, it's like over. I swear that's a rip run. Because uh, another thing about this game... If you're wounded, you move significantly slower, and it's a huge detriment to be wounded during a chase. You never want to be wounded during a chase. Uh, so just always make sure you have full health before any uh, significant enemy encounters begin. Now, I am. it's very important that you uh, crouch this whole way. That guy I just walked past who's lying down next to the campfire, if you're not crouching as you approach the bandage, He'll wake up and try to kill you. So uh, make sure you're crouching. Very important. Uh, so we just snuck right past him and grabbed the bandage nearby. And you do need to bandage and heal yourself here um, in order to progress with the story. So this has to happen. Uh, and then I moved far enough out of distance away from the enemies that no one can spot me. Although I'm pretty sure that guy who walked by originally, I, I don't think he can ever come back. Because I've waited here quite a while before and he never shows up again. Um, but maybe I didn't wait long enough. Who knows? Uh, always play it safe. Better safe than sorry. But once we're healed up, we're good to go. So I'm going to keep making my way over to the right here. There's this person sitting on the log. But I find if you just sprint around the campfire and loop around her, uh, she's not a problem. So you shouldn't have any issue with that. Yeah, these rocks you see me climbing, the game physically won't let you climb them if your hands are not bandaged. So that's why we needed the bandage. Um, but yeah, now we're just uh, making our way, running. There's uh, so some of the most dangerous parts in the game are coming up, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, this part is notorious for ending runs, though. Like, this area, I should say, not this part in particular. So you'll see this guy's flashlight aim towards you, and then it swings back, and then it aims towards you again. And then that'll be the final pass, and once he does that, he's going to start walking away, as you can see. And I don't like to sprint here because I don't want to alert him, so I just walk, uh, make my way towards where he came from. Once you start heading down this hill, you're pretty much in the clear. So we're going to keep making our way, and eventually there will be something you can climb. Right here, the bloodstains are a nice visual indicator that you can climb that rock. And we keep on going. Uh, 
Now, the, this next part coming up is very scary, but also very easy if you practice it enough. There's uh, visual tells to know how you can uh, do it well. But we're going to go ahead and make our way up this log, and then coming up, hop over the next log, and then we will have a drop-down sequence where we're going to uh, land in a pool of water. As soon as you drop down, Nick and Laird are going to come bum-rushing over to this uh, pool of water in order to try and spot you. Now, once this happens, you need to make sure you are crouched before they spot you. So, I wait till I see the light, and the second I see the light, that is when I crouch. And now, they are going to be looking around here for quite a while. This is uh, probably the longest that you'll ever have to stay underwater throughout the entire game. But, again, it's very hard to drown in this game, so don't be worried. So, he's going to be looking around for quite a while. There's going to be this moment where the light passes all the way to the left. As you can see, the bubbles there. I always see the bubbles when that happens. And then he swings back to check again. You wait for the flashlight to be completely and totally off before you uh, resurface from the water. And now this is the part where you get your camera back. You just walk over to this house. I don't sprint because I don't want to alert him. There's a bandage there just before you grab your camera. Make sure you pick that up. When you get crucified, you lose all your bandages, so that you will definitely have room for it. And then you're back in the school, so now you can officially be killed. But, uh, as yeah, so officially our battery has dropped to 75%, which is scripted, and it has to happen. So, uh, yeah, we lost some battery life. But don't worry, we still have plenty. 75% is more than enough to get through the game. But yeah, so we're going to run up to this hall here, the same one we came through the last time we were here. And that classroom at the end of the hall, you can see a light. Um, I, so what I do here is I actually back down the hall. I'm actually facing backwards. My back is facing the classroom and I wait, I keep backing up and I wait for the audio cue. You're going to hear the, the freaky music. And then the second you start hearing the freaky music, sprint all the way back to where you came when you started the school section. Once you reach here, uh, Father Louder Milch will not chase you this far. But he was chasing me there, and if he catches you, it's a one-shot, guaranteed he's going to kill your ass. So, yeah, you want to play these parts extremely carefully. But after that happens, uh, you're free to run into the classroom that he came out of. So we're going to make our way down here into the classroom. And we're going to go ahead and answer this phone. And this is one of the funnier cutscenes in the game. Uh, the dialogue here always makes me chuckle. Even though it's meant to be uh, serious and creepy, I always find it funny. Yeah, so we're just going to wait out this dialogue, and then, of course, we're going to get the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street reference that everyone pointed out when I was live-streaming this many times, so thanks for that, chat. Now I, now I have to say it as well. Right after that, you're expected to leave the classroom. The second you do, he's going to spawn on your right, so you want to book it. Just sprint out of the classroom and run all the way back down to where we originally did. You're going to see Jessica at the end of the hall. She jumps in a locker. You want to jump in that same locker that she did. And now you're free. That's the end of that school section. So now, this is one of the most dangerous parts of the game. Uh, Nick and Laird, as soon as you open that door, they're going to start shooting at you. You want to run out of the house as quickly as possible. So as soon as we exit the house, we're going to loop around to the side and head to the back of the house. And now we're like as furthest away from Nick and Laird as we could be. There's another house off to the right back side here. There's a fence. Uh, when you see those, you know you're going the right direction. Keep hugging the wall through the tree line until you get to this house. We're going to come through the window, and there's going to be two doors. We want to lock them both. So go ahead and do that. And now we're going to be a little patient. So there's a window off to the right here. Now, Nick and Laird may not be in the exact same location you see him for me, but just wait till he spots you. Once he does... You run past the tree, careful not to run into the barbed wire, slunk your way in through here, and you're pretty much in the clear. Now that part is insanely scary. Like I said, when you peek through the window, Nick and Laird may not be exactly standing for you where he was for me. And if that's the case, you literally just wait until he uh, ends up showing up and spotting you. You want him to aggro there. And then, basically, you're waiting for him to bust down the door. The second you hear that door bust down, you jump through the window and run. Uh, it's, it's timing intensive. You want to specifically wait for him to bust down the door. Here, by the way, you want to sprint across the log. The second you see the first arrow, you sprint. 
Uh, that is very important because he will kill you every time if you're not sprinting. And that is the part I was talking about where I didn't know you could sprint. Um, and I died there many times. So for this part, you want to just crawl the whole way. There's ample cover. It's really spooky, but he can't actually hit you because there's lots of cover. As soon as you get past that little pathway there, you crawl up behind this rock. Once you get to the rock, you want to stand up. And then we're going to sprint over to the next rock and slide. He will hit you there. Or he may not hit you there, but there's a chance he can. And we don't want to take that risk because it's a one shot. Run past the two sick guys in the tent. Don't linger there because they will attack you. Um, and now this part, you just sprint. There's no uh, strategy in particular. You'll literally just run. Be very careful not to run into the cactus on the right side of the first bend when you make that sprint. As soon as you fall through here, this guy's going to grab you. This is scripted. It has to happen. You uh, perform the QTE, shake him off. Definitely make sure you succeed. And as soon as you shake him off, you start sprinting. You have to start sprinting right away because that enemy is deceivingly quick. And he will hit you almost immediately if you don't start moving right away. Um, but yeah, if you fail that QTE, you die instantly. So uh, you, yeah, that part's very really scary. So we just had a long-ass fucking cutscene of Blake getting buried alive. So once that's over, we're gonna make our way out. Uh, I- that part always mystifies me. I don't understand how they didn't- they- they put, like, what? Two centimeters of dirt over the coffin? How was that buried alive? Anyways, as soon as you're free to move, we're gonna make our way over here. Now there's four enemies coming up. There's gonna be two- in the middle right so we're gonna path left here around this tree and then as soon as you pass those first two enemies you hang right around the two enemies on the left and then slide under the fence you're good uh that part's a little spooky but it's easy enough it, i would recommend practicing it but it's pretty easy once you get it down um it's easy enough to maneuver around them while sprinting and yeah now, uh, this next part, this will be the last enemy encounter with Nick and Laird, but it also happens to be the most dangerous one, which is very unfortunate. I, I know, this part just gets worse and worse. The, I would say the Nick and Laird sections are the worst parts of the game. Like, when you finish this overall section, it, it's a huge load off your mind and a, a huge weight off your shoulders, because th these parts suck. Don't fuck up this jump for the love of God. You do not want to plummet to your death. Uh, hang on to that window. As soon as you get in here, don't make sure to regain your stamina before you hop through the window above the door. Don't go through until you're ready, because as soon as you hop through, this section officially begins. This guy up ahead is going to spot you, and he's going to go run and be a little tattletale bitch. So start sprinting. Don't linger for too long. Head back around that house. Head to the left side of that outhouse. Uh, very important. And on the right side of this house and up the hill. That pathing path is extremely important. If you don't path the exact way I did, very easy to get hit and possibly killed. Once you reach the top of this hill, it's a good time to let your stamina regain. Because I don't think anyone's going to follow you up here. I don't think... I've never had it happen. Um, so Sprinting through there as fast as you can makes it so that no one aggros. So once you're ready and you have enough stamina, we're going to pull the branch here and the rope's gonna fall and uh now from this point again i don't recommend lingering as soon as you're ready to run down the hill commit to it um now some asshole is gonna spot me and this part was completely not according to plan i would have recommended see i saw him before i made it all the way down and he ends up hitting me and now i'm wounded this is extremely dangerous and i would go as far as to say that i got lucky here because Nick and Laird absolutely should have shot me with my decreased movement speed from being wounded. I'm shocked that I didn't die here. Now, as you approach the end of the run here, there might be an enemy around this general area for you. Because every time you do this section, the enemy pathing will vary uh, slightly. So if there is an enemy here, what you want to do is don't stop running. You want to keep sprinting because you don't want to get shot. So don't stop moving. But do your best to avoid the guy and run around him as you make your way over to where you use the rope. But, fact of the matter is, I could have did this part a little better. And you can avoid my mistakes as well. When I ran down that hill, I threw caution to the wind. I saw that guy approaching the rope, and instead of waiting for him to fuck off, 
uh, you know, I just booked it and I ignored him and he ended up hitting me. I highly recommend that you don't do that. Make sure he's not looking in the direction of where you need to go uh, before you end up running down that hill. But yeah, that's the end of Nick and Laird. You'll get the cutscene where he dies. And then now we're in the next school section. Uh, I do have a bandage on me, so we're going to make sure we heal up. You do not want to be running from Father Loudermilch when you're low on health. That is a fool's errand. And most likely, your death. Now, as you're running through here, you're going to hear your very spooky audio. You'll hear Father Loudermilch running around. And he actually is running around. But hes de it's designed so that you're not allowed to, like, really be able to find him. And apparently, if you linger here for a really long time, he will show up. So I wouldn't stick around. Uh, I've never actually seen it happen because that sounds idiotic. You'll hear someone behind that door, but go ahead and open it. It's completely safe. Make your way down here. There's another door in the darkness. Just fumble around until you find it. We're going to be making our way down these stairs. Now, once you get to the level that has the blood stain on the window, Father Loudermilch is going to spawn at the bottom of the next set of stairs. So now he's spawning. Now, make your way back up the stairs, but not all the way. Once you get back to the final set of stairs, he's going to despawn and respawn again in front of you. So now you want to turn around and run back down the stairs and through the door. Once you get through the door, you're safe. He's not chasing you anymore. However, he is going to be chasing you again in a, momentarily. So we're going to open this little compartment here, and we're going to make our way down the ladder. As soon as you get to the very bottom, you turn around, and there's a door in the darkness. Uh, just walk forward and open it. Now we're going to turn left, and you'll see a light at the end of the hall. Sprint. Do not linger or waste time here. Father Loudermilch is right behind you. As soon as you uh, make your way into that hallway, he spawns right behind you. There's a ladder at the end of the hall, and it's a little finicky. It's easy to, to fuck up grabbing it, so... Make sure you practice. All This is exactly what I mean when I say practice, practice, practice. You want to know these scenes by heart. Make sure you're very comfortable with them. So when you pick up the paper and then approach the wall here, you'll get this. Now this part, you're going to be trapped in pure darkness, pitch black. You won't be able to see anything except Jessica for briefly a moment. She's going to start running off. Track her movements with your camera. Make sure your microphone's on. You can see my microphone levels on the far left there. They keep going up whenever Jessica talks. Now, whenever the bars hit red, that's like peak volume. So that means you're moving in the right direction. From the direction you can hear Jessica the loudest, you want to just keep walking in that direction. Again, you do not need your battery life here. And because we already passed the 75% threshold, uh, you want to conserve as much battery as possible from this point on throughout the rest of the game. So never use your battery unless absolutely necessary. Um, but yeah, this part's very easy. It takes a while. Jessica's going to be talking for a while. But as long as you're following her volume at peak volume levels, you will eventually run into her. When you hear Blake say, Jess, are you there? That, that's how you found her. Uh, you'll know you got her. And then as soon as that part happens, you turn around. You're going to be in pitch black, but if you just turn around, you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel here. And then you start making your way down the path and where you need to go so now i would like to describe this uh upcoming section of the game as quite possibly the safest most leisurely relaxing part of the entire game you are you are in less danger in this section than you are in the entire game now you'll see a guy uh, go over into the water there and that's a death sentence by the way there's enemies in the water that can come out of the water do not go anywhere near the water we're going to come over to this house. There's going to be a window on the back room there. Jump through and then make our way up the hill. But yeah, there's it, it is so you're so not in danger for the majority of this and it's very easy to navigate the danger. As long as you're not being an idiot, you have no chance of dying. So, yeah. So we're going to keep making our way up these stairs here. And as soon as we reach the top, there's going to be a path over to the side. I'm out of stamina. Uh, figures long running segments will do that but yeah so make your way over to the path i'm waiting to regen my stamina because there's a jump just up ahead so yeah just let your stamina regain back before you uh attempt this jump you know common sense but once we have it back we're gonna go ahead and jump across here don't fuck up the jump there you go and we're gonna be making our way down to a nearby a uh, couple houses and you're gonna see some villagers running around down there they do eventually leave, um, 
Now, I've never tried hauling ass down there while they were still there, so I don't know if they can spot you, or if you can even interact with them, really. But to just avoid all risk of danger, I would recommend taking your time coming down here. Don't just sprint all the way over. Once you reach the raft, you can just hop on it and go. So now we're on the raft segment, and the raft segment is, like I said, very hard for you to die. Um, there's an extremely dangerous part at the very end of the raft section, but the whole time you're on the raft, this is basically a pleasure cruise. This is like the least stressful part of the game, and it lasts quite a while as well. So I recommend you just enjoy the ride, you know, be thankful that pretty much the hardest parts of the game are over. There are still some hard parts coming up, don't get me wrong, but like I said, I'm pretty sure Nick and Laird are, without a doubt, the most dangerous, nerve-wracking parts in the game. There are still parts like that to come, but just not anywhere near as many, I would say. Nick and Laird are, are just terrifying for the majority of time that they're even on screen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just by comparison, but... You know, uh, just be thankful that that is now behind you, and it's a huge stress reliever. You could be very thankful that some of the worst content and some of the hardest parts are behind you. So that's good. And we're going to be rowing for a while. This part takes a while. It's very slow. That was scripted. Um, it is possible to die uh, at a few different points during the raft sec section, but... It's so hard. I mean, you'd have to go out of your way to die. Uh, you know, as long as you have common sense and you're not faffing about, uh, you should be fine. Completely and totally. But yeah, so after that beam of light, you're going to see some fish corpses, another beam of light, and then bam, you're going to get knocked off the raft. When this happens, you're going to have to swim back to the raft. And I'm pretty sure if you don't, you can die here. So you want to be quick. Uh... It's not, but again, it's super easy. It's not super stressful. So just don't have brain damage and swim towards the raft. So there you go, making our way over to the boat. Father Loudermilch is like, get the fuck down here. But nah, we say no to that. Um, yeah, but that's, that's the reason why I would say don't take your time getting on the boat here. Because I think he can kill you if you take too long. You gotta smash square repeatedly once you get to the raft. And, uh, but again, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Alright, so... Now we're making our way. We're rowing again. It takes a little while to get to the, uh... The current that starts naturally propelling you forward, but... We're gonna be on our way. I'm trying to think of things I could say that, like, aren't immediately relevant to what's happening on screen, because... This part's kinda slow. What could I say? I don't know. I guess, uh... Oh, I can think of another tip, actually. So, with enemies, um, as long as it's not a boss enemy, a.k.a. Marta's a boss enemy, Nick and Lair's a boss enemy, uh, Father Louder Milch is a boss enemy, and Val, who we haven't... Uh, well, we've seen her, but we haven't interacted with her yet. Uh, she's a boss enemy as well. And I believe that does it for all the boss enemies. Those are the only games in... Or, bleh, those are the only enemies in the game who can one-shot you no matter what. Um, but every other enemy is fair game, meaning, yes, other enemies can one-shot you. Like, basic bitch enemies in this game can one-shot you, but I find they only one-shot you if you run directly into them. Like, if 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 there's a basic bitch enemy... Uh, act, so when you get to this part, I'm going to segue for a minute there. When you get to this part, you just have to mash square, and you're going to be mashing square for a while. If you don't mash square here, you're going to die. So, just make sure you're not brain damaged and you're mindful of this, and, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll get out with flying colors. Again, it, you can die there, but it's super easy, and you'd be a fool to die there. Anyways, um, what the hell was I saying? Boss, or er, yeah, basic bitch enemies. So, basic bitch enemies, um, I find, as long as you're not running directly into them, they, they don't one-shot you. I don't know how consistent or true that fact is, but I find if you turn your back to a basic enemy, like one of the farm guys from the beginning, or if you turn your back and walk into like a heretic, or one of the sickly people that you're evading in Nick and Laird's section, 
Those are all basic bitch enemies. And if you if you're ever not facing them directly, like if they hit like your side or your back, they never one shot you. You can always seem to take a hit as long as you're not facing them directly. Because I find that's what causes them to kill you. Like if you run into an enemy directly and head on, he'll just kind of put you into a death animation when you do that. It's like an auto kill. But if you're not facing them directly, they just kind of smack you and you can always take uh, a single hit as long as it's not like a death animation. So I find it's really important to know and understand that. Uh, again, that info would have been extremely useful in the beginning, but this entire video is just information overload. I've been talking nonstop, and it's hard to squeeze in all the information as you're watching the gameplay because I need to talk about what's happening on screen, uh, you know, to, to have the commentary be relevant to, to help you guys out in order to uh, navigate what's going on in the moment. But yeah, since this part is very lax, it's very leisurely, very dead, uh, I can talk about this kind of stuff. But yeah, so that that's a tip that's very important to know. Besides that, I don't really think I have any more tips. Uh, everything else is just pretty much common sense. We're going to get knocked off the raft here real soon. And when that happens, we're going to be walking around on foot. And there's only one dangerous part, but again, super easy to avoid it. Uh, yeah, like, I, I would be amazed if anyone got to this part of the game and managed to die. That would actually astound me. But there, we're thrown from the raft, and we're going to end up uh, beached on the nearby shore. So there we go. And now we're on foot. So there's no danger here yet. I, now, I've never actually lingered around here. I don't know if you waited for long enough if someone would show up. I wouldn't recommend that because I haven't playtested it. But we're just making our way up the path. You'll see one of the heretics up ahead who spots your raft. But uh, we're not going to give a fuck about that guy. We're just going to shimmy on across, making our way over. If you fall in the lake, by the way, or the river, that's, that's death. So don't do that. The current will carry you to your death, and that'll be it. So we're going to walk over here and push this tree over. you got to hold square in order to do it. And then we're going to have to balance across, so just careful not to lose your footing. Don't fall into the river. We don't want to die stupidly. And once you reach the end of this log, you're supposed to go left. But if you go right, there is a bandage. You can actually see it on the screen there for a second. Uh, so if you do need a bandage, you can come over and grab it. Looks like I did. There we go. And now, as soon as you start heading down this hill towards the raft, enemies are going to show up. Um, but as long as you don't linger and you just run straight to the, la or the raft, sorry, uh, they have no chance of catching up to you. So, it's, I mean, it is danger, but you're not in danger unless you, you know, fuck around. So, yeah. So the raft segment has almost come to an end. We're going to be rowing uh, still for a bit. But at the very end of this sequence you're going to be thrown from your raft yet again and then you're going to be surrounded by enemies and as long as you're sprinting through the water they're not an issue but you're going to want to be ready for that when it happens and then shortly after you avoid them you're going to be pulled into another school section and it's one of the most terrifying school sections in the entire game uh delaying even for a second means death so I'll talk more about it when I get there. And you also want to make sure you conserve battery life. So you're not going to want to go crazy. But at the same time, I highly recommend using your camera if you need to in the part coming up. Because it is very easy to die if you're not using it. Um, this section is, I find, very strict. And one little mistake can mean your life. So that's the reason why it's spooky. It's easy on paper... Because if you're ready for it, you're not really going to fuck it up. And if you know exactly what needs to be done, you'll be okay. But it's just a very nerve-wracking moment because one mistake means your run is over. And it's very nerve-wracking. So, yeah, that's going to be a part that's coming up real soon. We're still heading down the current. Uh, one of these assholes is going to drop a rock on your raft and it's going to smash it in two. There we go. And that's, that's that. But we're still going to be on the raft. And we're slowly going to keep making our way. As we do. You can see how long this section is. It's very long. 
But yeah, the, uh, the, the luxury leisurely part is almost over. We're almost back in the thick of it now. So we're coming up on that real soon. And I don't have much to talk about in the meantime. This part is way too lax, man. Should I have skipped it? Maybe so. Why didn't I? Because again, I don't want you guys to be confused as to what part of the video or what part of the game we're at. I want you guys to see it all in real time as it unfolds so that there's no confusion as to where we are or what we need to be doing. All right, so in just a moment, we will be thrown from the raft any second now, and we're gonna be prepared for uh, quite an eventful uh, circumstance here. So as soon as you fall off the raft, you are gonna be surrounded by enemies and you need to start booking it uh, over to this uh, warehouse looking area. Eventually you walk far enough and you're gonna be pulled underwater. Now as soon as you gain control to be able to move Blake, you gotta turn your camera on, turn around, and run the fuck backwards away uh, from Father Loudermilch. Now I'm pretty sure Blake, if memory serves, he raises his camera automatically, but I don't think he turns the battery on automatically. It's hard to say. It's it's been a while since I actually did the run. But when you get to the to the end of the pool, you need to see the wall. It's very important because you need to climb up the wall. And if you delay, if you're standing in front of the wall without your camera battery on, you won't even be able to see the wall. It's pitch black. So uh, that's why it's so important to use your camera battery life in order to do that. Like just flick it on and off uh, every now and then so that you could see how close you're getting to the wall of the swimming pool. And uh, before you walk through this door, you're going to want to regain your stamina because you're about to be chased again. Just so you know. But uh, yeah, I can't stress enough how important it is. That is one of the major parts of this run where using battery life is crucial and do not be afraid to, uh, you know, obviously within reason, don't overuse the battery. Like I said, turn it on and off. But please do not be afraid to use more battery there than you normally would because if you literally, if you stutter for a second, you stop moving for even a second, he's going to catch up to you and kill you. No joke. I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but I've had it happen, which is why I'm warning you guys. Um, when Father Loudermilch runs towards you, once you get to that door that we just saw, it's just a scare thing. He doesn't actually kill you. But, um, yeah, it, then you backtrack down this hallway. Now, this part, you're going to hear, like, Jessica screaming and shit. I, I don't actually know if, if Father Loudermilch is chasing you here. I just kind of assume he is. Because, like, it's very high tension there and very high pressure. But I've never stood around long enough to see if he actually was. I've never been caught there. So I don't even know if he's chasing you. But, yeah, you just make your way down the, the blood splink, sprinkler uh, hallways. And if you slide, you gain a lot of distance. But, uh, yeah, now we're at the uh, the warehouse and it's raining blood. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, so now, now we're coming up to... There's a couple more really intimidating parts coming up. Um, and uh, mainly I would say there's one really intimidating part before you get to the mines. And then there's another really intimidating part once you get to the mines. And then I would say those are the two biggest concerns and biggest worries left in the run. Uh, everything else is very doable. But yeah, once you get uh, here... Enemy's going to close the door behind you, as you can see, but he doesn't actually come in here with you. Also, you can't be attacked on your way there. Like, you'll hear a lot of enemies around you, but you won't actually get attacked. It's just a scare tactic. Uh, so we're going to make our way through here. You don't need to use your battery pretty much at all while navigating this warehouse. Uh, it's completely doable without it, assuming you memorize the layout. But, yeah, as you can see, navigating through the dark... Um, I like to face my back towards where I'm going there so I could see what's at the top of the stairs. And then we're going to just balance across here. Again, you don't need your battery in this room. Face your back to the wall and stare at the windows. Move your back to the wall and then just go left. If you get stuck on something, uh, move up and then left and then back. Uh, and I find that typically gets you through it. Open the door at the end. 
you do not need your battery there. I, I've practiced it enough times to know the layout. You're gonna get jumped by this guy, and he's gonna talk to you for a bit. I went ahead and skipped over most of it. And then you pick yourself up, and we're gonna be back in yet another school section. Uh, just a moment. Uh, actually, this is one of the scariest school sections there is. We're gonna have to do the library section. <laughs> or wait, no wait, is that yet? I don't remember if that's now or the next one. I can't remember. Well, either way, uh, we're gonna come up to this computer here, interact with it. We'll get some text, and uh, this is just uh, horror buildup and tension and atmosphere, all that good shit. Trying to spook ya! But, you know, you play this game as many times as I have, and you stop getting scared. The fear just goes away. You start looking at it for what it is, which is a video game. It's all about, you know, what's going on in the game and how everything works. That suddenly becomes a lot more important than being afraid. It's, it's funny how that, those things work when you play a game enough. You just... You learn so much more about a game, and suddenly, even if it's an extremely scary game, it doesn't scare you anymore. Granted, I don't know if enough time went by and I forgot enough about this game if it could spook me again. I mean, I would imagine so. But yeah, so we're making our way down this way, and I randomly decided to stop and smell the roses. Nice one, Matt. I'm not gonna edit that out, too. I'm not gonna edit it out! Alright, so we're gonna keep going, and we're gonna get pulled through the glass here. Now, interesting... Th oh, never mind. That's next part. Whoops! A little preemptive there. Quick on the draw, Matt. Uh, so we're gonna come through here, next to the bleachers. We'll see Jessica at the end. Uh, make sure you recover your stamina before you make your way down the stairs here. This will lead us back to the pool, but we're not actually gonna head all the way back there. Uh, on your way down the steps. So you wanna walk down this hallway. Um, I like to turn my back and just back up. The second you hear Jessica scream, sorry, you start running back up the stairs. Um, that's why you need to build your stamina up for that part. We're gonna blast through that door on the right. And now we're gonna get pulled through the window. Any second now. There we go. And now we're gonna be underwater back in the warehouse area with the raining blood. So as soon as you start here, you just uncrouch. It's that simple. You'll be underwater and you just uncrouch. And then you'll resurface and you can climb out. If for whatever reason you have problems getting out of there, put yourself up against one of the walls of the container and try to climb out, I would suggest. All right, so now uh, this part's a little spooky, but it's not too bad. So we're gonna start crawling through this hole, but not all the way. We're gonna start backing up and that enemy's gonna show up. And now we're gonna run over here. We're not gonna bother hiding or dicking around with these guys. We are just gonna wait right next to this door. Now what's gonna happen is uh, there's gonna be a uh, heretic who starts pounding on the door. One of them crawls through the hole over there and the other one's gonna start pounding on the door. Uh, once he breaks through the door, the idea is just blow right past him. Sprint and make your way up the stairs. Now this is a part where you, you're probably gonna wanna use some battery life because it gets really dark up here. And you'll need to be able to navigate because those guys are going to be right on your ass. So we're sprinting and we're going to come through this little gap. And now I waited for a second just to try to recover a little bit of stamina. Because this is a very long sprint sequence. Uh, feel free to slide if you uh, want to maintain some of your stamina. Because like I said, you are going to be using a lot of it here. Um, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary since I waited. Um, but yeah, by the time you reach the end of this running sequence, you're going to be just about out of stamina. But what matters is that we actually reach the end. So as you can see, I'm just about out of stamina reaching the end, but it doesn't matter because we're here. So once you squeeze through that gap, we're going to have, you're on a timer here. We're going to have to push this, uh, whatever this thing is out of the way. And you want to be quick here because they're breaking in. And then as soon as you climb out the window, bam, we're back in the school. Very good. Another school section. Yeah, you just kind of fly in and out of the school sections once you get to this area. It's pretty nuts. I'm trying to remember if you can die here. I fucking don't remember. Oh, no, wait. Wait. Wait? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. So we'll just see what happens as it fucking happens, as it unfolds. So, shimmy across here. Climb in the window. And we're going to exit the classroom just over to the right here. And we're going to be running for a little bit. We're going to see some 
disturbing imagery. Uh, but we'll just ignore that and keep on moving right along. I, I honestly can't remember if you're in any danger at this school section. If so, that's so interesting because this will be the first school section since the beginning uh, where you're not in any danger. I, for some reason, I can't remember. Fucking weird. But yeah, we're going to come through here. And then uh, this part, this uh, when I played this part blind, I was terrified. This was one of the scariest fucking moments. So if you just wait this shit out, as you can see, you see Father uh, Louder Milch's silhouette behind you, but it's literally just a scare tactic. He's not actually there. Eventually, the door opens. So we're going to make our way. Oh, this is the library. Pro okay, I was right. Nope, you could definitely die here. This is one of the most terrifying school sections. All right, so when you move up, it's going to trigger the library maze to spawn. You'll see Father Louder Milch up ahead, but he's now no danger to you yet. So you want to look for that, that short bookcase at the entrance, and I'm actually walking in the dark here. I know the layout of the maze very well. You're probably not going to be able to... You All I can say is you want to practice this a lot, because from watching my footage... It's not going to be incredibly obvious where I'm going. See, I'm doing this fully based off memory because I know the layout so well. And all I can say is that this part honestly isn't that bad. This part specifically, I mean. So once you get to the end, he's going to spawn. You want to backtrack. Uh, and there's going to be a little loop around here. This single bookcase in the center that's just to my left. You could see him approaching even without the battery life. And then you just run the opposite side of the bookcase, get around him, and then run to where he spawned. It's actually... I know that part is scary as shit, especially during your first time playing, but once you've, like, learning that strategy you just saw me perform, and learning the layout of the maze so that you could save the most battery life, uh, so, so you can navigate it without having to use too much of it, there's a bandage in this room, um, yeah, it's, it, that part is honestly not that bad, it's actually pretty easy, honestly, but that's given the fact that you practiced, because again, like I said, you, specifically for that part because i tried to save as much battery life as possible watching my footage and trying to replicate what i did is not ideal for for learning it you have to learn it yourself now the reason i stopped here is because father Loudermilch is going to spawn there as soon as you approach the third support beam um and then you're going to want to turn around use your battery here so that you don't get stuck on something because he's chasing you and we stopped just before I triggered his spawn so that I could regain stamina because you're going to need it in order to run away from him. Now, once you shimmy across, uh, you'll trigger this event, but you're not in any danger yet. Now, with this room, you're going to have to push a card up against the wall, jump over it to reach the next area. However, before jumping over the wall here, be aware that you are on a timer as soon as you finish jumping over that wall. It is very ideal to be as fast, quick, and efficient here as possible once you make that jump over so we're gonna come down the stairs and I like to slide once I get to the bottom which will put me right under the hole which is on the left of the bottom of the staircase and then we make our way through here and we're gonna squeeze through this gap again if you could be as fast as possible here you could save to yourself some time there's another hole here I slide under it and we're gonna make our way over here and we're gonna open this door now there's a cart inside this next room, and we need to do the exact same thing. We need to put it up against the nearby wall, climb the cart, and hop over the wall. The reason why I said you're on a timer is because the longer you take to do this, enemies will eventually show up. And if you do it as fast as possible, you won't even see them. If I didn't even tell you that enemies were going to show up, you probably wouldn't have even known by watching the footage. Because I was in and out of that whole room so fast that you didn't even see them. And once you hop over that wall, like where I am right now... Uh, you're not being chased anymore, so don't worry. Uh, you are in the clear once you reach this part. But yeah, that part can be very spooky if you take too long after jumping over the first wall. Like when you put the card up against the first wall and jump over. I find you are officially on a timer from that moment. And uh, I was checking to see there how many bandages I had if I was full. Because there is a bandage that you're going to see on the bottom floor just below me. And if I was missing a bandage, I was going to go down and grab it. You could see it there on my left. Um, yeah, given there's no enemies around here, so it would have been safe to, to go grab it. Um, but yeah, so now this next part. Very spooky. This is one of the most terrifying parts in the entire run, I would say. Um, so actually, never mind. We're not there yet. Uh, 
but we'll be there after the school section. I totally forgot about the school section. So as soon as you get here, you just want to turn around and fucking run. Now, he is right on your ass. And I can promise you, as you can see, if you get stuck on something here, or you delay for even a second, he's gonna catch you, and he's gonna kill you. Uh, I know that because I died here once. I opened this door, and you want to make sure you get all the way in that stall before you close the door. Because I actually died once. I ran up to the door, opened it, and before I walked all the way through, I hit square again, thus shutting it in my own face. And then he caught up and killed me for making that one mistake. So I can assure you, he is very up your ass in that moment. But yeah, when you climb under the stalls and then exit, uh, he will despawn. He'll be gone. And now you have nothing to worry about. That's the only real threat in this part. But, yeah. You can die to any sort of stupid mistake in this game. And I, I am confident that it'll probably happen to each and every one of you attempting this. At least a few times, minimum. Now this part's gonna be pitch black, but basically you wanna hang a left here, head to the end of the hall until you see a light uh, on your right there. You don't need battery life to navigate that. And uh, there's no more danger in this part, so we're just gonna keep navigating until we get out of the school section. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I've died many times in this game. Like on insane, I mean. I had like, I don't think I had 30 attempts, but I definitely had over 20. It was like 25 attempts or some shit. On, a, on insane. But again, um, I only had so many attempts because I routed all this myself. Came up with all the strategies on my own. Uh, developed my entire, uh, you know, game plan th via trial and error. Which is a long process. Takes a long time. Now, you'll see there that I had a little trouble shimmying uh, on the ledge there. Like, Blake wasn't clinging to the wall for some reason. And I did not want to walk forward because I was afraid he was just going to plummet to his death and die. That would have been an extremely dumb, stupid death. And i that's why I was extra cautious there. Because I don't know why Blake wasn't clinging to the wall. But anyways, just make sure you're patient in that moment. Once you push the cart, you're going to drop down here. And this is the part I was talking about. This is one of the most terrifying chase sequences in the game. So as soon as you land, the, their hair ticks are going to be all right in front of you. You want to turn around immediately. And you, I don't think you need battery life here because it's uh, pretty well lit. I took a little longer than I wanted to crawling through that hole and somebody smacked my ass, which was terrifying. Uh, I was having a little trouble getting under that hole quickly. And uh, I think it's because when I went under the hole, Blake wasn't sprinting. And like I said earlier in the video, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're going through a field of corn, if you're wading through water, if you're walking across a plank, if you're holding sprint, you can always be doing those things faster. And the same goes for crawling under a hole. You can also do that faster if you're holding sprint. So just always may try to make sure you're sprinting. But yeah, once you reach the end there, you're in the clear. And we have plenty of bandages, as I've made sure to grab as many as possible. Now, once you uh, approach the elevator here and hit this switch, you are in for the chase of your life. So the enemies are all going to be in the elevator. Once the elevator reaches the top, we're going to start making our way to the door over here. Eventually, it's going to bust open. Now, don't start sprinting until you gain your full movement speed here. And then start sprinting. You don't want to waste sprint. This, you are most likely going to run out of stamina during this chase, because it is, I think, the longest chase in the game. Um, yeah, so it's very easy to run out of stamina here. But, we can make an effort to maintain as much stamina as possible. Once we reach the top of the stairs here, we're going to do two slides, I believe. One, no, it was just the one. And then you jump off these stairs, and I like to wait here. Uh, eventually, you will see them coming at you, and as you can see, they are very quick. My stamina is already just about done, but for some reason, when I jumped off that ledge there, I gained a new uh, momentum, and I was able to move relatively quickly. I don't know what happened there, because I was definitely out of stamina. But yeah, taking that second to, to maintain stamina, I feel like could be absolutely so important. In making it all the way like if I'm being completely honest I thought I was gonna die there because I ran out of stamina way faster than I was anticipating but for some reason jumping off that ledge gave me a new burst of speed because I was completely out of stamina before I jumped off it was very intriguing I don't know what happened there very strange but 
I would imagine if you mimicked exactly what I did, uh, the same thing would happen, more or less. It, it, it is a chase sequence, so at the end of the day, it's pretty straightforward, but what I will say is that managing your sprint there is so important. Like, you might want to throw in an extra slide during that chase, uh, just to save a little bit more stamina, because as I, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but, uh, sliding doesn't cost stamina, so when you do it, you're propelling yourself forward without using stamina. So that, that could be good in very long chase sequences. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, now we are entering the mines. And the mines has a very terrifying moment coming up, uh, in not too long from now. Uh, but, uh, I'll, I will hold my tongue till we get there. So you want to drop out of the elevator and make your way behind it. And then you crouch down, you could drop underneath the elevator. And don't stand there for too long, for the love of God, because the elevator does eventually fall. And it would crush and kill you if you didn't move out of the way. All right. So now we're in the mines. So, we're gonna hang it right here. Um, for the first little bit, you are not in any danger. So we're just gonna be navigating the dark corridors here. And it's not too bad. I don't believe you need any battery life to do this. Um, so we're gonna head off into the darkness here. And I believe you hang a right? Or no. So I turned my back to the wall. Oh, it was a right, actually. Yeah, I turned my back to the wall just to see how far I was going down the tunnel, and then I and then I turned, and it was exactly where I said it was. Pretty great. And then we hang another right. And then we make our way down here. You're going to start hearing uh, Lynn off in the distance, and we will have to crouch under the water here to bypass this uh, debris. So go ahead and do that. And we are almost at the terrifying sequence coming up. So this part coming up, I play tested so many times, I can promise you. Now, don't descend this ladder too quickly because there are enemies at the bottom of the ladder. And it, if you go down slow, they will eventually fuck off and you won't even see them by the time you reach the bottom. But if you were to go, like, rush down there as fast as humanly possible, it is possible to run into them. Um, so you don't want to do that. And that was a jump scare from Father Loudermilch. Uh, you're going to see a cave-in up ahead, but if you just turn to your right, you will see the light down the next path that you are expected to go. And we're going to keep making our way. Now, there's going to be a hole up ahead where you need to crawl through. Now, with this hole, you just simply hold forward until Blake stops moving. You do not need your battery life here. Once you have determined that Blake has stopped moving and he's come to a complete stop, you want to stand up, and then you will be able to jump and climb the ledge directly in front of you. All of this is right in front of you. You don't have to turn your character to do any of this. So it's just going straight. And then once you do that, assuming you found uh, your way, now this part is absolutely terrifying. I have playtested this part so many times. Um, so there's going to be a guy who drops down on your right, so just wait it out. Wait till he leaves. And uh, this... I'll, I... I can't stress enough how many things can go wrong during this part. This is one of the scariest enemy encounters in the entire game because so much can go wrong here. But yeah, so he left on the door on the left and we're just going to make our way right past him and uh, make our way down this hallway. Now at the very end of this hall, if you move down far enough, an enemy spawn will trigger and you will have to turn around back the way you came and run all the way back down this tunnel that we're currently walking down. And you're going to want to run all the way back to the beginning of this area because you are going to be chased for quite a while. So I like to turn my back towards the enemy and then I use the turn your camera around mechanic so I can see him. The second I see him move, uh, which I did, I turned my battery life on for a second there because it is possible to get stuck in this hall and you don't want to get stuck on anything because that would be awful. Run all the way to the end and make a right. Now, if you've done this successfully... He will, he will have turned around by the time you reach the end of the hall, and he goes, he walks all the way back to the halfway down the hall there. You can see him at the end of the corridor. He does this every time, very consistently, so you don't have to worry about him being weird. He does this literally every time. And he's going to stand there for quite some time, uh, but eventually he will start roaming to go hunt you down. Now, when that happens, he has a multitude of choices he can do here. He, there's a, a fork in the road just ahead of him. He can go left or right, 
or he can continue down the hall towards you and go left or right. So that's a 1 in 4 chance that he's going to go right to where you are. But the odds are heavily in your favor. As you can see, he took the first right on his path. And as soon as you see him do that, you are free to completely just sprint down to the end, the very end of this hall, all the way to the end. And that is a free uh, victory over this section for you if he decides to do that. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Matt, you based your strategy off a 1 in 4 chance that you don't get unlucky. And yes, you're correct. I did. And in my defense, I know this strategy isn't 100% successful all of the time because there is that 1 in 4 chance that he goes directly to where you're standing. Um, but I can tell you, I playtested this part like 15 to 20 times. And majority of the time, he doesn't do that. I, out of all those attempts, he only walked to where I was once, if you can believe that. So the odds are so in your favor there, it's insane. Also, there's going to be a hole just over to your right here that we're going to need to crawl through. And this hole is as simple as just holding forward. So you just keep crawling forward ahead until you eventually see a light and you will be able to tell where you're going. However, feel free to come up with your own more consistent strategy if you want to build one of your own. I personally became very frustrated with that section because of how inconsistent it could be at times. And I decided, hey, I like a 1 of 4 chance. I like those odds, so I'm just going to hope I get lucky. And the odds in, are in your favor in my defense. However, I would totally understand if you felt very uncomfortable leaving anything to chance. Uh, this part is as simple as just running all the way down the stairs. Um, so, you know, feel free to pull up someone else's video to just to check for that part if you want. I will admit to... I don't want to call it lazy because I did put the effort to trying to make a strategy there for hours. And I'm not exaggerating. But everything I tried to come up with fell short or failed me at some point. And I just got so fed up that I decided, fuck it, I'll take a 1 in 4. Screw it. Now you'll notice I'm just in the darkness and it's impossible to tell what the hell I'm doing. But basically, as soon as you enter this dark area, you're going to want to be going more so to the left and forward. So forward and left. And it is, I do this part without using battery life, but if you're really struggling, feel free to use battery life for yourself. But I find you can uh, fumble around and just get through it. I believe there's also something you need to crouch under during that moment. But yeah, it just takes practice. I, I can't even fully remember exactly how to navigate it, to be honest. But I know that I got good enough at it that I was able to freestyle it and do it without battery life. But again, that just that that's because of all the training and practice I put in. So after the long cutscene with Val, we're going to turn around and immediately start running because she's going to be chasing you. And so we're going to hang right here. And then I believe a left. Uh, I was a little intimidated by Val here, so I used a bit of battery life to make sure that I wasn't getting stuck. Because I didn't fully remember this part. As soon as that cave-in happens, you could squeeze just to the left of the cave-in. That, that's right in front of you. It's still in front of you, but on the left of the debris. And Val won't chase you past this point. So, once you're here, you're good. But now we have a whole new section coming up where we need to navigate around Val in order to progress. Now, with this part, we're aiming to the left, um, and we're just navigating to the left, left and forward. And uh, again, you're going to want to practice, but you can navigate through there until you see the light at the end of the tunnel here. Um, very noticeable. I don't think you need battery life here at all, personally. Um, I just use it to make sure I'm not wasting time, because once you start w wading through the water here, you are on a timer because Val's navigating around here. So I go to the switch as fast as possible turn it off, and then I crouch and we wait for Val. Now, if you're not as fast to that switch as I was, if you didn't optimally route to get there as quick as possible, there's a good chance Val's going to see you pulling that switch. But I wanted to make sure that switch was pulled before she came through there. Um, so I made sure to get there as quick as possible. I playtested and practiced this section many times, and I find it to be very easy. I don't think it's very complicated. But yeah, now I'm trying to... I got a little lost there, uh, looking for the second switch, but I'm using a bit of battery life to figure out where it is. You didn't... You, if you know that 
place better than I do, you wouldn't have even needed to use as much battery life as I did. I'm I'm just using it as a precaution. Uh, and basically, now I'm hugging the wall towards the entrance of where we entered this room. Val is eventually going to path through here, um, through in through the way we came in, and she's gonna walk right on by. Assuming we crouch under the water as she does this, you'll see the light and uh, start lighting up the room, letting you know that she's on her way. Once you see that light, that's when you're going to want to crouch. And you'll be able to see her quite well, even while you're underwater. As you can see, she's uh, walking right in front of me. Now, I like to let her uh, create a little bit of distance here. The really nice thing about Val is she is slow as fuck. She's literally the least intimidating out of all the one-shot characters. Um, so the second she's far enough away, now I'm sprinting through the water, back the way I came, and towards the exit. And I, I know very well where it is because I practiced this section many times. And Val has no hope of catching you when you're sprinting through the water. Like, I, I have lit quite literally run circles around her. It's insane how slow she is. Practicing that part as many times as I did, I was very confident that I was going to get through it with no issues. So that's really cool. It, it's awesome that... You know, the mines is, like, basically the end of the game. And the this part of the game has the least intimidating boss character out of the four. Which is pretty sweet. It's very thankful. Because it's another one of those things that... It's a stress reliever, you know? Like, the worst is behind you kind of thing. So we wait for that minecart to, to circle back. And we change the tracks so that now we can line up with the uh, barricade up, up ahead here. And now we got to pull the minecart all the way back and then send it back down the ramp, which will give the minecart enough momentum and speed to be able to crash through the debris. So uh, if the minecart, for whatever reason, doesn't crash the debris, it means you didn't pull it far back enough. So just make sure to do that. But uh, yeah, I'm a little sad because that one, that part before Val where I was saying it was a one in four chance to do it, it's literally the only part of the game that I don't have a consistent strategy for. And, and I just feel so bad because I really wish I could have come up with one. But it was so hard. Everything kept going wrong. Now, yeah, but anyways, that's enough bitching and moaning. We're going to come down this ladder here. And uh, as you approach the end of it, you will uh, drop down past a point of no return. And you're going to be in a pitch black room. However, it is possible to navigate around without the battery life. Um, there's gonna be this, like, short little wooden fence you can hop over. Uh, it's right on my left here, you can see. So I hop over, and you make your way into the tunnel. Now, as soon as you start coming down this tunnel, Val's gonna show up on your left. And you're gonna want to crawl through this hole as fast as possible. You have now begun the next chase sequence with Val. This one is a lot more dangerous than the first one, in my opinion. Since the first one is easy, this one, however... It's easy to get stuck on something in here. Some of the rocks are, have strange hitboxes, and it's easy to just... It seems like you get stuck on nothing. And so you need to be hyper aware of that possibility. You're coming up to a fork here. You want to head to the right of it, and then through the hole up ahead. Uh, that's right there where I got stuck. You saw me come to a complete stop. Yeah, it's, it is spooky as shit to get stuck there. Because if Val catches you, you're dead. But yeah, then we hang another right and continue down this tunnel here. And uh, we're going to balance across these beams. Uh, you don't really need light for it. But uh, you, you end up dropping as you pass through it. And once you drop, you're actually going to be in a pool of water. Um, don't be afraid to use battery life, by the way, whenever you really need it in these sections. Because the mines are literally the final part of the game. And this is where you need the battery the most. So don't be afraid. Don't be stingy. But yeah, with this part, you literally just want to head towards the light. You are surrounded by heretics here, but I find if, as soon as you land, you just start sprinting towards the light, they're not even really an issue. They're not directly in your path. It's easy to, like, navigate around them. And even if you do hear them behind you, by the time you make it to this part and you slide down, you're in the clear. So, yeah, that part's really not too bad. It's more intimidating than it... than it, or it feels more intimidating than it is, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, so, um, and again, you know, completely feel free to use your battery as, um, as much as you want at this part. Again, uh, I will reiterate, within reason, but, you know, because this is the, this is the darkest section in the game, without question. The mines are dark as shit. 
But, uh, yeah, so we're gonna crawl under that, uh, support beam there and start making our way down this path. Uh, still trying to conserve battery life al along the way, even though, really, the worst is over. But eventually you're gonna, uh, run into a ladder here. I, I had a good, uh, notion of where it was, which is why I didn't really need battery to see it. But, again, feel free to use battery if you need it. And then there's gonna be a second ladder. And from here we want to climb directly above us. Or wait, no, that's not yet. Okay, no, we're at the support beam now here. So we have to balance across this beam that you could see in front of me. And you want to be extra super fucking careful here. Because if you were to drop and fall, you would die. And it would be the worst feeling ever. Because this part really isn't that bad. But yeah, so once you reach the end of the beam, you climb, you climb up again. And then you're golden. But yeah, I can honestly say I do believe that the worst truly is behind us we have one more chase sequence coming up not too long from now and then after that we have one final enemy encounter and then that's it if memory serves so there's very little left to worry about and the worst is definitely behind you which is fantastic uh now we do have to uh maneuver uh slightly under those uh stalactites up ahead you're gonna slide down this hill and you're gonna get smoked in the face by this bitch! And then, um, yeah, now we're, like, on drugs or something? I don't know. And there's a lot of, uh, sexual activity going on in this room. Which I didn't realize at first for a while. But, um, yeah, some shit's going down. And we're gonna navigate and walk across to the end of the room. And, uh, there's gonna be a lot of scripted events coming up now. Um, a lot of walking, so we don't have to worry for a little bit until the end of the next school section. So just keep making your way to Lynn, and eventually uh, Val's going to try and uh, have her way with you. It's pretty interesting. Bam! She's like, I want some of that Blake D! Alright, so now we're in the school section shortly after that scene, and uh, this is just walking simulator. You... Walk along with Jessica until you trigger a cutscene with Father Loudermilch. This is the dickhead who's been chasing us through the school the whole game. Trying to murder us and shit. And now you find out the truth behind why Blake sees him as this horrifying demon. And uh, the truth about what really happened to Jessica. So you walk to the end of the hall and eventually you hear Jessica scream. And then you turn around and run back all the way to the classroom that they that you left those two in and then hang it right here and eventually you will uncover the truth the terrifying awful truth of what happened to little jessica oh no oh yes that is what happened Ba, 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 ba. Oh my god, Jessica. Oh no. And then, and then, yeah, so now you immediately want to be ready to run after that scene. Those guys are going to start chasing you. And you really don't want to be stingy with battery life here because it's very easy to get stuck. As you can see, I just did. I got completely stuck and stopped moving when I came into contact with that support beam in the center. But yeah, you just run to the end of the path, you'll drop down once, and keep going, keep going, head left, and then another left. And now, you're pretty much in the clear. I don't think they chase you past this point, but just keep going. Uh, there's no reason not to just keep sprinting. I never actually stopped to find out if they're not chasing you anymore, but I don't think they are. And uh, this part's as simple as just continuing to go forward. There's a long staircase ahead of you. But you don't really need light for it. But um, you officially, after this part, don't need light at all whatsoever. You are officially done using your camera battery. So you have no reason to use it anymore anyway. And now we're with Lynn, reunited with the love of Blake's life. Who's strangely and mysteriously pregnant. But why? I had to watch a video uh, explaining this game's story because I... Through all my playthroughs of this game, I still didn't understand what was going on. It made a lot more sense after I watched the video. And turns out, this franchise has like a comic series too that explains a lot of what's going on. You gotta love when 
you need to buy all this other shit to fully understand the scope of a story. But, uh, yeah. Um, there's a lot happening behind the scenes during this game. And a lot of this game is really just Blake losing his fucking mind. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, this part is as simple as just navigating, uh, with Lin. You just have to walk to the end of the path. And, uh, you are walking for a little while. But we will eventually get to where we need to be. Which is going to be a broken down, run down house. Or an abandoned house, or something to that effect. And once you see it, you'll know that you're where you need to be. But, uh, we're not out of the woods yet, lads. We got one final enemy encounter coming right up. And if I'm being completely honest, it's easy, but it's also incredibly terrifying. It's it's a very scary section. Because, uh, one fuck up and you're dead. But, uh, yeah, so here's the, the broken down house I was talking about. So what's going to happen is we're going to lower uh, Lin into this pit, um, much so like a gentleman would. And that's going to go exactly according to plan. So don't worry about that. It's going to play out exactly as how we expect it. And uh, wait for it. Oh, Blake, you motherfucking asshole. You just dropped your pr pregnant wife. The fuck, man? Anyways, we're going to jump in the pit and pick her ass up. And uh, we're going to end up setting her down on the bed. What's going to happen shortly after that is Marna's going to show up at the very end of this hall directly across from us. And she's going to start uh, chasing us, uh, albeit very slowly. Now, what's going to happen here? It's very important that at, right after she shows up, you don't want to start sprinting and going as fast as you can right away. You want to stop and wait. For just a second or two, uh, maybe not a two full seconds, but as you can see, I stop here for a second. And as soon as I saw her coming through the door, that was when I turned around and started running. Now, the reason I did that is because if you go at full speed right out the bat, she'll actually path around this uh, alternate route and end up cutting you off and killing you. And it... it Having your run die here would be the absolute worst fucking thing imaginable. So you really want to make sure you wait that extra second for Marta to, to get just a little bit closer to you. It's scary as shit, spooky, I know, but it could save your life. Believe in patience, my friends. As you can see in the camera, you can see me popping the fuck off. And uh, you're going to start seeing uh, donations roll in to my... Um, or from my beloved community who was very supportive of me in my moment of triumph and uh i would i was very very happy because uh fun fact when i got to that marta part i didn't know that she does that because i hadn't play tested it enough i actually had someone randomly tell me in my live stream chat because i was live streaming this um someone mentioned that she might do that and i got freaked out because i didn't even know she could do that Despite me having playtested this part a few times, uh, for some reason I never had her cut me off before. And, uh, so I just didn't know that it was a possibility. And, uh, after, uh, you know, learning that she could do that, I, I decided to take a second to make sure that she didn't cut me off. And it worked out beautifully. And, uh, I was a very happy boy. Here come the donations. <laughs> We've got to have money. Thank you, Tony J, uh, for, for delivering that beautiful line. And thank you guys for the beautiful donations. It was fantastic. I mean, I already said all my thanks in the live stream, but yeah, I'll do it again. My community's pretty great. It was awesome. And uh, the, you're, you're pretty much totally free to uh, just celebrate your ass off and be happy that the, the trophy will be yours momentarily. Now, uh, <laughs> I remember someone in chat saying... Oh my god, because the the trophy doesn't pop till you get to the credits. And someone in chat was like, Oh my god, what if the game crashed or, so, or froze or some shit or the power went out at this moment? And it just... Oh my god, that was Nightmare Fuel, whoever said that. That, that, that would be the worst thing ever. But, uh... Yeah, I can't even imagine. Oh my god, I've literally never had anything that fuck over happen to me before in a game. 
I've had some terrible things happen, uh, don't get me wrong, but that would be, like, the biggest kick in the dick, like, possible. But yeah, so after that long scene with Lynn, um, who has regrettably passed away, and Papa Noth, who, uh, has regrettably killed himself, now we just walk on outside and make our way towards what is the end of the game. I mean, really, I don't even need to be recording this, but I figure we're still in game, so why not? I'll keep recording. Fuck it. But that is essentially the run. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I hope that it, you guys find it extremely helpful. And let me know if you did. And, you know, I truly hope that you guys can get this trophy for yourself as well with the help of my guide. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck with attempting this. And I hope that you can all achieve it for yourselves as well. Uh, like I said, you know, Cliff Notes, uh, I gave you all my uh, short tips, my quick tips throughout the video. And uh, so just remember those. And also, um, practice makes perfect. If, uh, you know, practice all the sections in the game on Nightmare Difficulty several times until you got them down pat. And I can't stress that enough. It is so beneficial to do that. So please make sure that you do. Eventually you'll get warped back to the school section and then you gotta find Jessica. Uh, she's off in the room where you guys were wrestling. So just go ahead and find her and you'll start praying. And then shortly after that, the credits are gonna roll and then your beloved, most anticipated trophies will start popping momentarily. So there's Saint for beating it on insane mode. And then there's Messiah. For insane mode one battery why there's two trophies for insane i have no idea we also got the profit trophy because uh using these strategies i didn't actually hide in a barrel or a uh, cabinet the whole time which was great but i did offer alternate strategies in case you needed to so you might not have gotten the trophy uh, depending on whether or not you used those backup strats but uh hey who cares if you have to get this trophy on an easier difficulty so be it fuck it and we also got the trophy for finishing in four hours it's pretty cool but yeah so that's gonna be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching my insane mode messiah uh trophy guide uh and if you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and of course hit that notification bell to support me i would really appreciate that it would mean a lot and please feel free to check out my channel for more guides just like this one, as well as trophy hunting related content of any kind. Anyways, that's going to be it for me, so take it easy everybody, have a good one, and I will definitely see you in the next one.